Hey guys, I wanted to dive a bit deeper into my upcoming um, Alchemist Splatter tool. It allows you to uh, take any input uh, or layer below it and um, turn it basically into a larger surface. It works with uh, scans as well as uh, uh, images. Uh, this is just a, a picture I took on my phone. There's uh, several I'm going uh, to look through just to show uh, what the possibilities are. Um, this one doesn't work that well, <laughs> but it's going to be uh, uh, pretty interesting to see the results. So first you drag your image into the uh, bitmap to material uh, option in Alchemist. Oh. And there you have it. This is already pretty interesting, so I'm not going to tweak this. Um, and then you can import a custom filter with the uh, Substance Designer logo. And I will put in the splatter. This is called the uh, one sample. It basically uses, uh, as it says, one sample out of the uh, base layer and um, splatters it around in an uh, organic way. Um, there are several options. You can generate the height as it is doing right now. Um, or you can use the input height and results vary and that's why that option is there. Uh, so you can always get the result you're looking for. And already this is looking pretty interesting and organic. Uh, you can see some repeated elements uh, being scattered around, which is uh, one of the limits of the um, uh, single sample. Uh, but I'm working on uh, multiple versions, uh, depending on uh, different scenarios. You can then choose uh, another one. Let me just crank up the resolution a bit. So now we're going into 4K. And this is pretty solid, and um, by default it is set to uh, 6 splats. If we increase it to 8, you get a bit, uh, kind of like a zoomed out effect. Um, but you'll also squeeze more pixels into one pixel, basically uh, kind of like super sampling uh, the image that you put in. Um, now what's also cool is the edge feathering. And there's a debug uh, option, it'll, it'll be a bit more clear in a future update. Uh, right now it's a bit uniform in color, um, but if we look at a portion of this and then disable the feather, it's hard to notice, but these edges are a lot sharper. And if we increase the feather to say uh, 0 0.5, you'll see that it, it causes some bleeding. And what this does is it uh, basically blends the elements uh, together a bit better instead of getting a hard transition, which in some cases is actually preferable. Like right here, it looks all right. But if you turn it on, the elements blend together a bit better. And if we set it to like 0.25, it'll give you a nice, uh, nice radius for that. And then there are of course options for random rotation. Let me just jump down in resolution a little bit. So now if we rotate it, you can see that the elements are uh, blending based on height. So higher elements uh, are on top and lower elements kind of slide underneath. So you want to kind of balance it so that you don't have sticks under rocks unless you uh, want that effect, of course. Like if someone drops a rock on a ground full of sticks, that's not surprising. Um, we also have the option to use the input ambient occlusion or generate it. And if you generate it, you can also change the, uh, the depth and the radius, of course. So if we set this to 0.1, you should be able to see a bit more uh, of the effect happening. But it's kind of hard with the real-time shadows uh, turned on to see. But I like the real-time shadows because they emphasize the depth a bit more. For now, we'll just use the input uh, ambient occlusion. Could actually be that these, uh, I should rewire them. They are, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will be fixed once it hits our station. <laughs> As this is a uh, work in progress still, but I wanted to go over it just to show the possibilities. Um, and for the normal options, you have the intensity slider, uh, the sharpness in here as well. It's based on the uh, Sharpen by Halo filter I did earlier and it just makes it pop a bit more and um, 
it's not fully non-destructive, but um, you can increase uh, the detail subtly if you want to, uh, or you can just totally deep fry your image. Uh, if you're working with low res art, that might be interesting, or if, if something is very um, uh, flat in terms of, of how dynamic the colors are, uh, it's a useful option to have, but you don't need to use it, you can just turn it off. I usually prefer having it on just to make it pop a little bit more, as we're always dealing with uh, textures that aren't, uh, you know, the same resolution as real life surfaces. Um, but it's a matter of preference, and that's why the option is there. So if we go back to the import image, uh, what we can do, and I often do this uh, just to make sure that we maintain uh, a square pixel ratio. So I put in a crop node and looking at the image, it is 3024 by 4023. So 3024 by 4032. I got those mixed up probably. Ah, yes. So now the pixels are uh, square and you can actually, this is a bit finicky because uh, it doesn't really snap, but you can try to maximize the uh, amount of pixels you can get in here just to get uh, a bit more data out of it. Um, so we go to the 3D view, slide this back in a bit and oh, crop should actually be above the import material. Uh, import image. My bad. This is also my second YouTube video ever. <laughs> Hope it doesn't show uh, too bad. But you can do it manually as well as I'm doing right now just to ensure that you have more or less square pixels, uh, enough information in there. Let's go to the 3D view, turn on the spatter input. And now we can actually lower the amount of splatters a little bit um, to make it a bit more dense. So let's go to 6 again. Maybe change the rotation a little bit or change the overall rotation per splat. And then why not try another image? So this is the same resolution but it might be rotated. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. And again, um, it's really nice to just uh, tinker with it as well to kind of get the uh, get a feeling for the variation you can get. And it's nice to see how things actually slide underneath each other. It, it, it's pretty organic. Sometimes you get these weird intersections like right here, but just offsetting it a bit kind of fixes it uh, already where it looks more like it's going underneath it or like this, this looks like a natural overhang right right there. But it, it takes a bit of uh, tinkering to get the ideal result, but th this can get you some varied terrain textures really fast. Um, plus it also works with scans. If you just put your scans in the, in, in the material here, put your splatter input on top, um, you can effectively scale uh, two by two meter materials uh, to ridiculous sizes. Like let's say, uh, if we look at the, uh, at the image itself, uh, scan one. Oh, oh, this is the cropped one. Um, but basically, let's say this is, and, and being generous, like 50 by 50 centimeters for a scan, which it, it would tile uh, like crazy. You would have lovely detail though, but it would be very apparent that it's tiling over larger surfaces. Um, but now we can scale it up to crazy amounts, and you will see repeating elements quite a lot. Uh, and this is where one of the strong suits of Alchemist comes in as well. If you want to break this up, you can just put in a different uh, layer uh, or just save this, dra drag it back in, put in another image uh, and, and blend, the, blend your materials like that. The height is a bit exaggerated due to me increasing the uh, tiling. Um, and there's also for the height the option to uh, disable random offsets and this will change the balance a bit of the individual elements. Uh, by offsetting it randomly, you can occasionally get sort of like a circular uh, shape due to how the splats are made. Um, but it's a nice option to, to change up uh, your image basically. So if we go back to 12, 
just to get some some something nice and dense. And then change the image up, and this is one of my favorites because um, it's it's not a perfect image to work from. This is at an angle. Uh, there's lighting information. Um, the corners aren't really sharp, but the sample actually takes a splat from the center of the uh, of the image. Um, that way, it avoids the seams. Um, and you can get some really nice results with this actually. So if we look at the input, which is pretty nice, Alchemist is doing a great job in uh, turning this into a varied material. Um, this would be, a, you know, for a Pikmin style game, this would be probably be pretty good because uh, of the scale. But if you want to get some dynamic uh, sizes going on, it's easy to just change the splat amount. And even at, at low values, um, this you can see the intersections uh, uh, a bit too much, I think. But if we change the, if we disable the feather, you'll see these really sharp edges here. Let me dive in a bit. And the feathering actually helps mitigate that to a degree. So if we change this to 0.5, you'll see that there's a, it's a subtle difference, but it just helps it ground a bit better. If we go to 16, you'll have a really dense uh, forest, almost moss type ground with some leaves and stuff. Um, I've been uh, tinkering with this for hours just to, to, to see what kind of results you're getting from different images. Here's uh, an extreme one, a close-up of uh, some moss and some oak leaves. And if we drag it in, you know, it, it, out of the box it kind of works. And uh, this will probably take a bit of tinkering to make it like look really, really perfect. And here you can actually see that the feathering is doing uh, a bit too much right here. And that's why the option is there, just to be able to, to tone it down a bit. Let's say uh, point, uh, 0.25, maybe that's too high still. Drag it down to 1.5, 1, 1.25. And then you don't have those blurry spots, but you don't have these super hard intersections either. Uh, which isn't that apparent in this case, because it's two very contrasted materials, the, the sticks and leaves combined with the, uh, with the moss. And if you scale it very big, uh, you do get some, um, some repetition, like I said. But overall, um, it's, it's pretty interesting. And this can be a nice uh, jump start, basically, for your materials. And here we have another image. This is a bit blurry, but it still works. And it's, it's pretty interesting as well. Um, this is one of those cases where you would ideally take a sharp picture. Um, but just as a proof of concept of how versatile it is, this is pretty interesting. And then my favorite, this was really surprising. It's just basically a clump of moss within uh, pine needles. And this works surprisingly well. And it does take a, a, a splat in the center, but with the random offsetting uh, in height, it looks really, really nice. And it's, it's kind of hard to see that this is just from a single image, uh, unless you really look for it. And most uh, people who play games rarely um, identify these things. I think uh, artists are really sensitive to it, uh, which makes sense because, you know, it's our job. Um, but it's really interesting to, uh, to see how far you can push this, basically. This, this is one of those instances where it's pretty scalable. And we can change the rotation a bit. And if you have no random rotation, it still works. Uh, for sand, for example, uh, you, have, you want that nice directionality. If we go full random, and it's fast too. It's, it's really nice to see how uh, how fast this updates actually. So there we have it. Um, I will put this on ArtStation uh, on my store pretty soon. Uh, once I made sure that the uh, parameters aren't uh, swapped, <laughs> but that's a minor tweak. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I had a lot of fun making these. Um, so let me know if you have any feedback suggestions or tips and um, also if you if you like me doing these things uh, these tiny walkthroughs um, so yeah thanks for watching and uh, have a good time